The Big Story by John Escott. Chapter One. Rosie Doyle lives and works in London. She is a journalist. She writes for the Record newspaper. I can't use this story, Rosie," says the editor. "It's old news. Bring me something new and exciting. Bring me a big story." He looks at her. "You're tired, Rosie. Take the afternoon off." Go and see a film or something. A big story. That's not easy to find, Rosie thinks. But a film. Yes, that's a good idea. Rosie goes to the River Thames, and waits for the river bus. It's a cold February afternoon. Rosie sits on the river bus and looks out at the city. But a man and a woman in front of her on the river bus are not interested in the city's buildings. They are Americans. They talk, and Rosie begins to listen. Fifty thousand euros, Miss Yardley, the man says. I want fifty thousand euros to get it. I don't know, Lazardo, Miss Yardley begins. It's worth half a million. Lizardo says, "Fifty thousand is nothing." Rosie forgets about the film. It isn't important now. She listens carefully to the man and woman. Pierre Valmy's chateau is in the mountains. Lizardo says, "The job." Isn't easy, and it's dangerous. All right, Miss Yardley says, fifty thousand. Bring it to Venice on Thursday afternoon, two o'clock, at the Rialto Bridge. Rosie gets off the river bus. The man and the woman are in front of her. The man walks left, and the woman walks right. Fifty thousand euros, Rosie thinks. Is there a story here? Rosie goes after the woman. Where's she going? Rosie thinks. And who is she? Suddenly, the woman stops, and looks back. She looks at Rosie for a second or two, then goes into a house. Rosie goes to the house. Julia Yardley, she reads. She's an art dealer. Art dealers buy and sell pictures. Perhaps the man on the river bus is going to buy a picture. But why is that dangerous? Perhaps he's going to steal a picture. Rosie thinks suddenly. But what can I do?
Chapter Two. Two nights later, on a mountain in Switzerland, Roger Lazardo skis across the snow. It is after midnight. In front of him is a big chateau. Lazardo breaks the lock on some doors and goes. Into the chateau. Very quietly, he goes upstairs. He sees a door in front of him. That's Valmy's bedroom. Lazardo thinks. He goes into the room. Valmy is in bed, asleep. Get up, old man," Lazardo says. "Who, who are you?" Valmy asks. Valmy sees the gun in Lazardo's hand. "Get the drawing, Valmy," Lazardo says. "How do you know about?" Valmy begins to ask. It doesn't matter," Lazardo says. "Get it." Valmy gets a paper from the safe, a paper with a drawing on it. In a different room, a man gets out of bed. He is Hans, Pierre Valmy's servant. What's that noise? He says. Who's talking? Is it Monsieur Valmy? In Valmy's bedroom, Lizardo takes the paper from the old man. Then he ties him to a chair. He looks at the drawing, and laughs. A million euros for this little drawing," he says. "You art collectors are crazy." Lizardo leaves the chateau with the drawing in his bag. Hans finds Monsieur Valmy. "Go after him!" Valmy shouts. "Dig!" The snowmobile. Yes, Monsieur, says Hans. And you call the police, Monsieur. Hans quickly gets the snowmobile and goes after Lazardo. Lazardo skis down the mountain. Lazardo. Sees Hans on the snowmobile behind him. That snowmobile is fast, he says. Chapter three. The snowmobile. Is getting nearer and nearer. What can I do? Lazardo thinks. Lazardo sees some trees in front of him. Wait, he thinks. I can get through there. Lazardo skis between the trees, but the snowmobile can't follow him. It crashes into the trees, and Lazardo escapes. Rosie 
is eating breakfast in her London home. She is watching the news on TV. The owner of the chateau is Pierre Valmy. The news reader says, "The Picasso drawing is worth half a million euros, perhaps more." Valmy, I know that name. Rosie thinks, but where? Yes, from the man on the river bus. Pierre Valmy is talking on the TV now. The thief. Has the Picasso drawing? He says. But what can he do with it? I know, Rosie says excitedly. He can give it to Julia Yardley in Venice tomorrow at two o'clock, and get fifty thousand euros. The thief is the man on the river bus. Do I go to the police? Rosie thinks. No, you go to the police after you get your big story, Rosie Doyle. She says. Perhaps you're wrong. Perhaps it's a different man. Go to Venice and see. Rosie gets the next plane to Venice. The next day, Rosie is on a gondola in Venice. She gets off the gondola at the Rialto Bridge. Nearly two o'clock, she thinks. Where are they? She sits in a cafe, has a coffee, and waits. Chapter Four. Some minutes later, Julia Yardley arrives at the Rialto Bridge. There she is, Rosie thinks. But where's the man? Lazardo isn't far away. He's watching Rosie. Why is that woman watching Julia Yardley? He thinks. Does she know something? Rosie suddenly sees the man from the river bus. He's meeting Julia Yardley on the bridge. Lazardo gives Julia Yardley a package. Is that the Picasso drawing? Rosie thinks. First, Lazardo leaves the bridge. Then, when Julia Yardley begins to walk away. Rosie follows her, but Lazardo looks back and sees Rosie behind Julia. That young woman knows something. He thinks, and he goes after her. Rosie follows Julia Yardley to a big hotel. Julia goes in. But Rosie waits in the street. Now I can phone the police, she says. But Lazardo is behind Rosie now, and he grabs her phone. No, you don't, he says. What? Rosie begins. From the hotel, Julia Yardley. Sees Roger Lazardo with Rosie in the street. Lazardo has Rosie's arm in his hand, and she can't escape. What's happening? 
she thinks. Wait, I know that young woman's face. She goes out of the hotel again. Now Julia is with Lizardo and Rosie. Lizardo pushes Rosie into a dark alley opposite the hotel. Julia follows them. Do I know you? Julia asks Rosie, and she looks into Rosie's face. Ah, yes. Now I remember. Outside my London office on Monday. Who are you? Ah, my arm. You're hurting me. Rosie cries. Okay, okay. My name's Rosie Doyle. I, I'm a journalist. What do you know? Lizardo asks. Be careful. I don't want to hurt you, but I have a gun in my pocket. I know. I know about the drawing, Rosie says. I know about Valmy. How do you know? Julia asks. Rosie tells them about the London River bus. What can we do with her? Julia asks Lizardo. Leave her with me, Lizardo says. And he smiles nastily. Chapter Five. What are you going to do? Julia asks. She is frightened. Lizardo is a dangerous man. Don't ask questions. Lizardo tells her. Phone your collector. I want my money soon. Tomorrow, Julia tells him, and she goes into the hotel. Lizardo and Rosie wait in the alley. Lizardo watches one of the windows in the hotel. What are we waiting for? Rosie asks. For Yardley to phone somebody. Lizardo answers. Five minutes later, Rosie sees Julia Yardley on a hotel balcony. Julia picks up a black book from the table, and goes into her room. She's phoning. Now we go in. Lizardo says. And don't run away. Remember the gun in my pocket. Lizardo gives some money to the man at the hotel desk. Well, Salvatore, he says. She is in her room. The man at the desk tells him. And now she's making a phone call. Right. Who's she phoning? Lizardo asks. Wait a minute, Salvatore says, and he picks up the phone on his desk and listens. Giovanni Piano, Salvatore says to Lizardo quietly. Lizardo smiles. So she's selling to him. One of the most important collectors in Italy. I know him. Salvatore 
puts down the phone. She's meeting him at four o'clock. He tells Lizardo. At the Cafe Antonella. Lizardo looks at his watch. There's not much time. He says. What's her room number? Three o one. Salvatore says. Giovanni Piano is crazy about collecting. Lizardo says. He buys important paintings and drawings, and he asks no questions. What are you going to do? Rosie asks. He laughs. <laughs> I'm going to get back that Picasso drawing. He says. Then I'm going to sell it to Giovanni Piano, and get half a million euros. Not fifty thousand. Lazardo knocks on the door of room three o one. Julia opens the door and sees Lazardo's gun. What? What are you doing? She says, "She is frightened." When they are in the room, Lizardo finds the drawing in Julia's case. He grabs it. Then he says, "You two are going to stay here quietly." To Rosie, he says. I'm going to come back for you later. He smiles nastily again. Tie her to the bed, Lizardo tells Rosie. Rosie looks at his gun, and ties Julia to the bed. Then, Lizardo ties Rosie to a chair. After ten minutes, he is ready to leave with the drawing. See you later, he tells Rosie and Julia. Chapter six. After Lizardo leaves, Rosie tries to move her arms and legs.、Uh, perhaps I can get out、uh, onto the balcony. She thinks. She begins to move her chair.、Uh, uh, uh, uh. Rosie gets her chair out onto the balcony. There is a newspaper on the table on the balcony. Rosie tries to knock it down to the street. After some time, she knocks the newspaper off the table. It falls into the street, and some people see it. A young man sees the newspaper. Then he looks up and sees Rosie. He runs to the hotel. Some minutes later, the young man arrives at room three o one with the hotel manager. The young man unties Rosie, and the hotel manager unties Julia. My name is Bernardo. The young man tells Rosie. Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. She says. Then 
She tells the hotel manager, Phone the police. Tell them, go to the Café Antonella. Rosie tells Bernardo and the hotel manager about the Picasso drawing and Giovanni Piano. The hotel manager phones the police. Then he speaks to Rosie, Julia and Bernardo. The police are going to the Café Antonella, he says. But they want to ask Signora Yardley some questions too. I'm going to the Café Antonella, Rosie says. She looks at her watch. But there isn't much time. We can go in my boat, Miss... The young man says. My name's Rosie, Rosie says. OK, let's go. At the Café Antonella, Lizardo waits for Giovanni Piano. Giovanni Piano arrives some minutes later. Who are you? He asks Lizardo. Where is Signora Yardley? Forget Signora Yardley, Lizardo tells him. Here's the drawing. It's beautiful, Piano says. I must have it. Suddenly, the two men see a police boat on the canal. Then, Lizardo sees Rosie in Bernardo's boat. He gets up quickly. More police arrive in the street. Lizardo looks at them, then at the police boat. It's very near now. You! A policeman shouts at Lizardo. Stop! But Lizardo runs to Bernardo's boat. Lazardo gets onto Bernardo's boat. He knocks Bernardo into the canal. <coughs> now, Lazardo drives the boat away, fast. Lazardo tries to get away from the police. It is not easy with gondolas and more boats on the canal. Suddenly, there's a gondola in front of them. The boat turns quickly. <gasps> and Rosie falls into the water. She swims to the gondola. Now, Rosie is in the water by the gondola. Bernardo's boat crashes into a bridge and starts to sink. Lizardo falls into the water. The police get Rosie out of the water first. Then they get Lizardo. Have you got the Picasso drawing? Rosie asks a policeman. Yes, thanks to you, he says. The police take Rosie back to the hotel. Bernardo is waiting for her. Well, I've got my big story, Rosie says. That's going to the editor of the record tonight. Are you a journalist? Bernardo asks. Yes, Rosie says. Ah, uh, can you stay in Venice for a day or two more, Rosie? Bernardo asks. Rosie looks at him. He's nice, she thinks. And I can send my story to the editor from here by email. Yes, perhaps I can.
she says, and she smiles.